Well, well, well. Well, well, well. It is uh, <coughs> fucking Jesus Christ. You know, as a parent, I'm so proud. <laughs> uh, that was dad. That is dad. He's with us this no, week. No, that was him burping. That was not him burping. That was a very much an Andy burp, which is lower than it should be. In, uh, it's guttural. It is guttural. It's, it's like the Tin Pan Alley of burps. What is Tin Pan Alley? Uh, well, they wrote songs. Yeah, when? Back in the 70s, 60s. Carol King was part of it. Ah. James Taylor, maybe. Yep. Um, that's, yeah. Yeah, that's all we need. Okay. Tin. Why was it called Tin Pan Alley, though? Well, okay. See, you can't say that's all we need and then immediately ask questions. Well, I figured you knew. No. Well, let's look it up. Mom's, I think it, I think I would it also... goes all the way back to the 20s. Really? Yeah. Uh, and it's even a uh, it's a song. It's a blues standard. That's not where they made tin pans? I mean, you would think that's... Uh... Or were they playing tin pans? No, I think the were tin pans is what, is what they were collecting their money in. That's what I was just going to say. Like they were, on the, like they were out like there busking. Tin Pan Alley was a collection of music publishers and songwriters in New York City in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. Uh, so that would be the 1800s as well. 1800s, the referred 17th to a, century. It originally referred to a specific place, West 28th Street, between 5th and 6th Avenues in the Flower District of Manhattan. That which means is, nothing to me. I don't really know how the avenues and streets work up there. Uh, streets climb up like a ladder. Avenues go across. Yeah, but then which numbers are the which direction are the numbers moving in? South to north. See, so, that's stupid. Should go north to south, west to east. Well, that's why you don't make maps, Rue. Not anymore. Uh, in 2019, the New York City Landmarks Preservation Commission took up the question of preserving five buildings on the north side of a street as a Tin Pan Alley historical district. Huh. Uh, let's see here. Origin of the name. Uh, various explanations have been advanced. Uh, the most popular account holds that it was originally a derogatory reference by Monroe Rosenfeld in the New York Herald to the collective sound made by many cheap, upright pianos, mm. all playing different tunes being reminiscent of the banging of tin pans in an alleyway. However, they can't prove that. So, there you I think go. we need to get some tin pans in an alley. Uh, in its prime. Uh, yeah, I know. We're good. Okay. Well, fucking. I like how you decide when we're good. Well, it's either I tell you now or I cut it out and post. <laughs> well, what if I'm we were saving myself the trouble? You don't know where I was going. What if we would have gone somewhere really cool and you're like, I oh, was, we could have totally used it? I was going to sleep. Yeah, Dad oh. was falling asleep. <laughs> but also, he does that anyway. Yeah, that's true. Well, yeah. he's not wearing his hearing aid, so he doesn't really know or what's going on. Or he might have just walked 40 feet, so now he needs a rest. <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah, Mom is also here. Uh, but as soon as we said we were doing the pod, she was like, I'm going in the other room. Yeah, she does not like this about us. Uh, she, I, I don't think she'd listen to it if Dad didn't make her. Yeah, I agree. Honest. But also, we say a lot of shit on here that a mother probably doesn't want to listen to. What, like I love you? We've n- and uh, here's my pube groomers? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, by the way, we are brought to you by manscaped.com. Yes, we are. Uh, Manscaped. Groom your pubes. Dudes. Yeah. Uh, Groom your pubes, dudes. Mom and dad are out here. Uh, Dad's out here for the first time since 1987. It's true. Chris was 43. And uh, LAX had one terminal. (laughs) And all of Avenue, all of, uh, all of Avenue was dirt. That's how long ago Dad was. Yes, there. that's true. They didn't even. We landed in a blimp. We t- <laughs> well, well, landed, crashed, whatever. <laughs> oh, the humanity. That's Burbank's problem now. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we've had a great time. We've been doing stuff. Of course, we'll get into that in a little later. Yeah, we're uh, having fun. But today we're just chilling. We're at my apartment here in Toluca Lake. Adjacent. Nope. Regular. Uh, I don't see. I don't. We're not on the lake. You have to be a member of what? Of fucking Lakeside to be on the lake. 
No, I think you have to be like grandfathered into the Toluca Lake. All right. And it's like it's like a gated community, I believe, and everyone has it. It's a lot like uh, Lake Quivira. Lake Quivira, another gated community lake in Kansas City. Yeah. Which was a lot cooler in the 60s and 70s. Like, even in the 90s, it had some cachet, but now people are like, oh, I live in Lake Quivira. People are like, oh, okay, do you drive an Edsel? A what? An Edsel. It's an old car. What the fuck is that? <laughs> God, you guys are both so old. Lake Quivira lost its glow when George Brett moved out. Is I, that what did it? I yeah, loved I so. Lake Quivira in high school. We would have bonfires there, and then we would take out my friend's boat. He had one of those driveways that heated itself, so the snow would just melt off. Oh, nice. You didn't have to shovel it. We also, at Lake Quivira, when we were at his house once in high school, his backyard, so they all, like, there's a lot of land when you live there, up yeah. behind the house. So we hopped his fence, which was out in the woods. And we hopped his fence into his neighbor's backyard, and his neighbor had, like, a grotto pool. It had a walkway. We, like, went through their whole thing. They Did they a, know you were doing that? No. We were trespassing. <laughs> they had a grotto, like, Playboy Mansion style, and had a waterfall into the pool. And behind the waterfall was, like, a bar that had a jacuzzi in it. It was very porny. It'd be hilarious if we got a letter, got a listener mail, like, That's I own dad. that house currently. <laughs> Literally. Like, <laughs> Uh, they also had, like, stairs you could go down that had a viewing of, like, the pool from underneath. Oh, wow. It was wild. There was nothing weird that ever went on in that house, right? It no. was very much like we had just walked in after a party had ended or something, or they were running Yeah, inside, was there just but... come just, like, on the pool? There, I feel just like... like is that algae? No, that's fucking that's Gary. Semen. That's semen all over that satin robe. <laughs> It was crazy, and you could, like, jump into the pool off the top, like, cliff jump, quote-unquote, off the top of the waterfall. Oh, yeah. Rich people. Man. I'm a golden god! Literally. <laughs> it was it was crazy. I yeah. wonder if I could find anything out about that house. If you know anything, write in. Mom and Dad used to have, like, friends that had, like, cool, like, I remember we used to go to the Miller's house, and they had, like, a pool and, like, a pickleball court, and the uh, the they the had Miller? a donkey Robert Kong e. machine. Your mom worked for it. Robert intern. E. Miller? Uh-huh. That sounds like an author. No. no, they were cool people. I just remember going over there and it was like, oh, this is, it was like going to Silver Spoons, which is maybe a reference you also don't get. But Man, you know what? How about you guys just do the pod? <laughs> you know, Ricky Schroeder, <laughs> Captain MAGA, he's always on the TikToks talking about minorities and stuff. Anyway. There was a show about a kid who grew up rich, and we were supposed to feel bad for him because he was just a regular kid that grew up rich. It was the eighties, huh? So, yeah. man, I don't think that I don't think that show flies nowadays. No, no. Oh, fuck the great. It's was like, he adopted? I, I don't even remember. And I, I, wa- I just remember I didn't even know what was going on in the show, but he had his own life size train. <laughs> like, oh, like Richie Rich. Yeah, I think Richie Rich is definitely like the next gen. It's like fucking Silver Spoon's next generation. Yeah. Uh, or Blank Check. Or Blank. Oh, yeah. Go Disney with it. I love that movie. This kid, he gets a blank check and he fills it out for like a lot of money. I forget how much it is, but he gets like a roller coaster in the backyard. It was sick. Uh, <laughs> kind of like Michael Jackson. Yeah, but with a less bit, rape. Yeah, a lot of less rape. It was a Disney movie. Yeah, like zero rape. Zero rape. Yeah. yeah. Um, cool. Well, welcome back. Welcome back. It's the One Millionth Podcast. I'm Chris Porter. I'm Andy Porter. I'm Scott Porter. Uh, and that's three of the four people in the family. Mom's in the other room watching golf. Yeah. Uh, that is. <laughs> that's what she'd rather do than listen to what's happening here. We offered to paint something so she could watch it dry. <laughs> she said that would be too thrilling She just gave us the finger uh, And uh, our new sponsor We are brought to you by Manscaped Manscaped hey, Fucking trim your balls boys Chris Porter here again to tell you all about Manscaped.com I know last week when I started talking about it You were like Chris I don't need special trimmers For my balls I've got garden shears I've got my dad's old weed eater 
but I'm telling you, Manscaped does it right. They give you a properly sized shaver. They give you little guards so you can have different lengths. You want to do shapes? You want to give yourself some sideburns? You want to have an Elvis dick? Give yourself an Elvis dick. See if she'll love you tender, love you sweetly. Friday night with no plans? Why don't you just grab yourself a bottle of your favorite liquor and your little lawnmower and just go to town? It's like a whining paint for your dick. Give yourself a shape. Next time she sees it, she'll be like, is that a bolt of lightning? And you're like, you're goddamn right it is. Go to manscaped.com. Get yourself a lawnmower. Get yourself some ball toner. Get yourself some ball deodorant. And when you're all done, enter in the code 1 million pod in the promo code. That's all words, 1 million with a TH and a POD. You get 20% off and free shipping just for listening to the pod. Get some more BJs. Yeah, if you want it in someone's mouth, it should be shaved. Yeah, or at least trim down. Give it a buzz cut. Maybe draw some lines in it like vanilla ice in the 90s. All right, you could talk about your pubes later. Okay. That's probably a reason your mom's not listening to this right now. Hey. I don't want to be listening to it. Hey, the fact that we're represent that our new sponsors, it's just a sign of progress. Can we just talk yeah, about that? Get sure. It. And and God bless back attack snacks and we wish them the best on their journeys. Uh, we're not with them anymore. We're not with them anymore. Oh, cool. actually, to be f- if we're gonna be real honest with you, I don't think we've been with them for quite some time. Huh? I don't think. <laughs> They haven't sent its product in fucking months That's true. and uh, or sent us a check. So I don't Man, think that I, we blew that 60 bucks fast. I don't think we move that pro. We're moving the nuts like we need to. <laughs> Speaking of moving nuts, move yours over and trim a little bit. Yeah. Using manscape duck. <laughs> get the whole kit in caboodle. <laughs> oh. oh, God. Anyway, it's been a fun week. Uh, tell it has been a fun week. It has been a fun week. Uh, tell them about your week. I uh, started a new job that I can't talk about because I signed an NDA, but it's great. Awesome. Um, yeah. And then when I'm not working, I've been meeting up with you guys. Well, Monday we had a we had a softball. We had our first double. Well, we had a double header. We had a double header on Monday. We lost, lost both Bofa. of them. But both we played- of these nuts brought to you by Manscaped. <laughs> Uh, go to manscaped.com and earn the code one millionth pocket, 20% off your whole order and free shipping. Double uh, header. But yeah, you hit it real. Oh, Andy had a hell of a catch. I sure did. Man, I, I didn't was, think I was going to catch it because usually in those instances, I don't. No, you don't. Well, I also don't play the outfield typically, but. Well, maybe you should because you were killing it out there. Uh, you played outfield on our old team and you did real well. Yeah, the ball. I was Yeah, the ball never came to me. But still, when the, the times that it did, you did. Are you well. saying I shouldn't be at first? No, I'm just saying you might excel at outfield. Okay. Uh, you know, just because you say that you should do something doesn't mean I'm saying that you should do. You shouldn't do something else. It's not an if. Then. I'm already lost on what you're talking about. Well, this, this has been a fun pod so far. You've been a lot. You've been super. I got lost receptive. in what you were trying to say. Oh, okay. Uh, anywho, uh, Andy made a hell of a catch, batted real well. We actually played really well. Yeah. We just, sometimes you lose. That's life, baby. This life. Uh, and then what'd you do on Tuesday? Tuesday, I, uh, we're doing the whole week. I got ready for mom and dad to come into town. Oh yeah. You cleaned yeah. your baseboards. I did clean the baseboards. We talked about it on the last pod. Oh, that's right. And then, uh, we talked about it and Chris was like, why are you cleaning your baseboards? Literally next day. I get a text from Chris. It was like, how the fuck did these baseboards get so filthy? They weren't that filthy the other day. I had just looked at them. I think, I think Andy was like dirty baseboards, and that was the magic words, like Betelgeuse. And uh, so, yeah, I cleaned my baseboards. I didn't swiffer my walls like a psychopath, but uh, I did clean my baseboards. I can't and you get know the what? I'm parts. a better man for it. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I agree. Clean your baseboards, gentlemen. And then the next day, Mom and Dad came into town. Yeah. It was fucking awesome. We went to Grant. Uh, what did you do Monday or Tuesday? Well, Monday we had a game. We had our games. We did. Uh, and then I went home. And then Tuesday. Uh, what did I do? I did stuff around here. Yeah. I just got ready for the parents to get into town. Uh, then woke up early in the morning and washed the sheets and went and picked up mom and dad at LAX. Which was uh, a shit show. Fun. So, uh, as a matter of fact, we did a little victory lap around LAX because it's all chopped up in the middle. 
and uh, there's a lot of construction, a lot of you should go this way or maybe this way, and I went the wrong way, apparently twice, and uh, we ended up right back where we started, and I was just like, motherfucker! And, you didn't uh, have that thing on autopilot? Uh, autopilot just keeps you in the lanes and then at a certain speed. It doesn't get you where you're going. Oh. So that's, that's... that's called full autonomous, and I don't... Then yeah, you, I don't think even full autonomy would have made it through that no, it'd have been bad. little maze. I think we'd still be there, and the car would be going, can't get left. <laughs> uh, but yeah, and then we uh, took the scenic route in, because again, I took a wrong turn, and we ended up on the 105, but it was fine. And uh, what? Can I have the weed pack? Okay. That's a callback from last week. What? Pointing at something. Oh, Okay. I thought you were just pointing at the bong. <laughs> Which, by the way, I broke the down stem. Got to go get another one of those, but we'll get into that. Uh, yeah, so Wednesday went and got Mom and Dad. Uh, brought them up here. We got them all situated. Dad had his first encounter with the bidet. Uh, how'd you feel, Dad? You weren't, you weren't, you were against it coming in. I know. I, I, I'm speechless. I mean, yeah, yeah, it's a game changer. That's for sure. Yeah, it's a whole different kind of clean, right? And, well, so, sure. That's got to be the cleanest your asshole has been in years. <laughs> and well, I, I'm sure it took a couple of days just to break through the top layer. Oh, yeah. What do you call that? Sediment? <laughs> Crust? Permafrost? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah it, it, it was a game changer. So you're going to get one? I'm not going to run out tomorrow and get one, but... You're going to get home, and you're not going to have the bidet, and you're going to be like, I, that needs to happen today. It's bidet day. <laughs> bidet day? It's, it's bidet. What day is it today? It's bidet day. Bidet day, today day. Uh, for a bidet, for day day. <laughs> I will still, I will still uh, contend that it's the best $400 that I've spent for my butthole, and uh, I miss it when I'm gone. Oh, someone hasn't had a fistula. <laughs> a what? <laughs> Uh, if you had one, you'd spend more than four hundred dollars on your butthole. That's what that is. Fucking, <laughs> you got you. We can't just go. We can't just skirt past that. A fistula? The hell is that? That sounds like, like a, a really giant zit on your butthole. Uh, really, what it is? It's when. Oh, you had to ask. Your sphincter, uh, has had some kind of. There's a second pathway coming out of your butthole. Is basically what it is. So what, like... You have a second smaller hole that has like a little trail that goes up into your rectum. And then it's like, it's like a second tinier butthole. So there's like a cul-de-sac in my rectum? Could be. Or, or is it more of like a pit lane where you can get off? It's a pit lane. It's a pit it's lane. It's like a way station. Okay, so what, and what happens there with uh, the fistula? Just a little poop gets stuck in there and it is... It is painful and it's not good for you. Oh, is that? Uh, that can happen when you've torn your butthole. <laughs> uh, it can happen if you have had a cyst on your butthole or an abscess. <laughs> um, it can happen if you sat down on a construction cone a little too fast. <laughs> a little too fast? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you just, you know what? You if you're sitting down on a, yeah. If you're sitting down on a, on a fucking... Traffic cone. You, you want penetration. First of all, Chris, uh, don't assume the size of the traffic cone. They come in all shapes and sizes. I never said it was. I never said he or she. No, the traffic cones themselves come in different shapes and sizes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There can be like little ones that we use for like... Shuttle shell sprints. Casing. For, yeah, <laughs> shuttle sprints. Yeah. Oh, yeah, all the times we do shuttle sprints. Yeah. Uh... Well, see, learn something new every day. I thought Fistula was some sort of failed superhero. Uh, uh, no, like, Mr. Like Fistula part, is my punk name. Like my Dracula, but for f buttholes. It's a cereal. Like you just fist people. Count but, Fistula. Count Fistula. I like well, Mr. Fistula. Now, now you have a nickname. <laughs> Count <laughs> Fistula, one. <laughs> what did we do Wednesday night? We went to Grandmaster Recorders. Oh, that's right. And had cocktails. And then we came back here and didn't have dinner. We should tell them what Grandmaster... Grandmaster Recorders is this new place. Uh, 
on Coenga here in Los Angeles where they've taken an old uh, recording studio that I didn't know was there and uh, turned it into a pretty posh bar. Yeah, so it's an Italian restaurant on the main floor. The upstairs is a rooftop bar. Um, Earth, Wind, and Fire used to record there. I talked. To, I do believe I met. I brought it up when I went there a couple months ago with Tyler for the first time. Um, but it's just a really cool space. They it was have even the, listed in the AAA magazine this week or yeah, this month. Yeah, that's why we went. Mom saw it in the AAA magazine. And they have the disco ball from Dancing with the Stars. That's right. I don't know if you know that. It's a pretty big deal because it's in their logo. Uh, Who but cares? Yeah, and uh, yeah, we uh, kind of crashed a... Uh, work event? A work... It, it was like... We absolutely could have crashed it. I think we should have just gone in there. No, there was a lot of fucking pretentious Every, uppity people in Everyone there. thought we were with that group. But we didn't have badges. We just had to grab whatever badges we wanted I when we walked in. I fucking lawyer. <laughs> uh, My name's Mr. Fister. But also, they had like, why didn't they rent all of it out? Like two thirds of it was rented out. And then there was like four tables for the general public. <laughs> and I was up there like, oh, we're just, we're just kind of... Not crashing a party, but also crashing a party. Yeah. Uh, it was okay. It was all right. If you're into f- fucking 12, you know, $16 drinks in the sun, it's a good $16, spot to go. A little more than that. Happy hour was not that happy. <laughs> well, you are in fucking Bouge Town, USA. So. Yeah. <laughs> then I managed to leave my credit card at the place. And but you got it back. You got it back. Got it back. Yeah. No bigs. It was easy. Easy peasy. Yeah, we came back here, didn't have dinner. Oh, it was that's rough. Right. Yeah, Thursday was a rough morning. Yeah, Chris Th- used the bidet for his mouth. <laughs> After he barfed, he just used it as a water it's pick. It's like a kneeling water pick. Uh, it tasted terrible. Chris can't use his water pick unless he's kneeling. <laughs> I mean, it's just, you know. The water gets everywhere. He likes to have his chin next to the sink. No, uh, this has been fun out here. I've yeah. enjoyed it. Thursday, what did we do? Thursday, we ate here, right? Uh, yeah, we yeah, made, made dinner steaks. here. Dad made steaks. They were awesome. And then Friday? Friday, I took Mom and Dad down to uh, the promenade. Yeah. Because it was fucking... Bu- Great thing about L.A., and we've talked about it before, if it's hot where you are, you can drive somewhere where it's not. Yeah, and every town has an outdoor mall. So we drove down to the wonderful Third Street Promenade in Santa Monica mm-hmm. and uh, made it about three steps. And uh, yeah, we just fucking had a good time. Went and ate a Barney's Beanery. Mm-hmm. Uh, walked around. Mom and, Mom and I went down to the beach. Mom put her feet in the sand and in the ocean. Ugh, love to put your toes in the water. Dad watched us from a distance. He loves to watch from a distance. From a distance. Dad will watch and not walk with you from a distance. Dad will sit and make sure you get through Uh, from a distance. So, yeah, I had a great time down there. Drove back just in time for Annie to get off work at a job that we can't talk about because she signed an NDA (laughs) brought to you by Manscaped. Uh, and so, then I made barbecued shrimp, and Andy made fondue. Yes, oh, I made that's some right. We had, fondue. we had a night at Andy's house. Mm-hmm. It was a good time. Hadn't been to Hollywood in a while, and it's boy, did you bring that up a lot. <laughs> it's just you forget how fucking busy it is all the time. And uh, yeah, but no, it's good good times. I'd never had fondue before, and which is weird because you know how I love to dip things in cheese. Uh huh. But, uh, I needed to add more Swiss to the cheese. It needed to be, it's usually like runnier or like more melted together. Yeah. Well, yep. It happens. Live and learn. That's what I say. Hey, you know what? That's what they say about fondue. You, fun, you fondue it. And sometimes right. you fondue. And sometimes you fondue. And that's okay. It's just we're here to have fun. We're here to learn. And we're here to learn. And you know what? Melted cheese is melted cheese, and it's always fucking delish. You learn more True. from your failures than you do from your wins. The flavor was there. It just wasn't our consistency. Anyway, then after that, we had some barbecue shrimp, and then they went home early, and so I played video games until I went to bed. Which was about 30 minutes after we left. Very True. 
Because I got real stoned after you guys left. I got stupid. And then uh, Man, that's yesterday, not a far journey. Huh? That's not a far journey. Yeah. Well, mom says she gets mad when you say stuff like that, so stop doing that. No, she doesn't. I've never heard her say that. She literally just said she gets offended. When, when I you say talk that about that I'm stupid. And then I went to stupid school. Cuz that means mom went to stupid school. How does that work? They were both went to the same high school. Mhm. Yeah, but she went at a different time. I'm just saying, whatever. She's not going to listen to this anyway. <laughs> and then last night? You know, yesterday we got to start at the top of yesterday. Um, Don't jump right, ahead. Right, 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 right. Sir. Sir? Quit leading the segments. Yeah. The guests don't lead. Guests don't lead. So yesterday we... <laughs> Dad wanted to do something. Yesterday was Mom and Dad's anniversary. Happy 46th wedding anniversary. 46 years. And they haven't done a, a murder. They Neither haven't... of them have committed a murder, which I absolutely would after 10 years of marriage, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I don't think you'd survive eight I watch enough of those murder shows. They'd fall into my trap before I'd fall into theirs. Or until, unless he started showing you murder shows that put you off his trail. Yeah, that's all your mom watches, though. First of all, which I've is seen something all... I don't understand. I just don't get. You hey, let's made that clear. I'm fucking. I'm alone. I'm fucking having a good time. I'm comfortable. Let's watch something that will freak me the fuck out. <laughs> When dad was traveling all the time when I was little and like you'd be off doing whatever teenagers do in DeSoto, dad would sitting in a field. <laughs> Mom and I would be watching Rescue 911 like on repeat and Dateline. Yeah, I remember one time I watched an it's episode of Hunter movie. that scared me so bad that I called mom and dad at their party and said they needed to come home. An episode of what? Hunter. What's that? It was a 80s cop show starring one Mr. Hunter. Sergeant Hunter, and uh, he had a female, like, sidekick, and the fucking sexual tension was always there, but they never, I don't know. Will they, won't they? Will they, won't they, yeah. And it was always, like, uh, you know, it was 80s, so you'd be all these, like, funny shows on Friday, and then at 9 o'clock, and then at an all-new Hunter. and uh, He was a former L.A. Rams defensive lineman. Oh, was he? Yeah, the actor. I don't remember his name. But, uh, yeah, just like the first of many, like, lone wolf cops. Like, you're not going to tell me what to do, and I'm going to solve the the crimes. Yeah. The only rule I play by is Hunter fucking wins. Uh, Seems like a pretty obvious rule for Hunter. (laughs) But don't you get it? His name is Hunter, but also he hunts. It's double entendre. Oh, like Dog the Bounty Hunter. Yes. Uh, His name was Fred Dreyer. Fred Dreyer. Dreyer. Yeah. Can I have another beer, Chrisser? Oh, sure. (laughs) (laughs) Which one do you want me to have? I don't know. Just does it matter anymore? No. (laughs) I mean, I think it does. I don't know. Just go. Just will you hand me my beer on your way? Yeah. You guys talk about shows of the past. Hey, Dad, you remember the soup? (laughs) (laughs) That's good. (laughs) How about when nature calls? (laughs) How about power up? Oh, that that was that. That's actually a low blow. Uh, I remember. I, I will say this. Uh, the one thing I miss that they don't have anymore, Saturday cartoons. Because we used to wake up every morning, and Dad was just as into Saturday cartoons as I was. And they would... Uh, I don't remember what came before 10, but at 10 was Looney Tunes. And uh, you... That's where Dad and I were on Saturdays. Yep. And there was no if ands, or buts. And there was always a good one up front, then a shitty one from the 70s, and then a road runner, and then a really great one at the end. Yep. How do you remember all of that? It was every morning. Before he could walk, I would sit him in his little um, seat. Hamster cage? With a, with a <laughs> bottle. 
and I had it propped up so he could watch TV. He didn't even use his hands. He just sat there and sucked on that bottle and watched cartoons. It was a <laughs> Not great much pacifier. has changed. Why, did he go for your nip one too many times? He couldn't hold them anymore? <laughs> you know mom didn't breastfeed us. <laughs> Obviously. Oh. That's why we have attachment issues. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, uh, but yeah, I do remember that. Those those were great days. Those were, and then and then at by eleven, I would go outside and play, and then I wouldn't come back until like six. I was like Huck Finn. I was out there, <laughs> yes, you, out except on the for river. all the N word stuff. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, obviously without all that. And but we lived out in the woods, so like literally, we would go out into the woods and play yeah. war or walk down the. Dirt road to the fucking fields. Or go across the street and down the hill to the train tracks. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, crazy times. But yeah, yeah 46 fucking years. <laughs> wow. Went back to that. Man. Uh, Mom and dad, 46 years. That doesn't happen anymore. Congrats. Literally, it does not. And I hope you make it to 60. Years? Yeah. Oh, I mean marriage. I yeah. hope we do too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's you know pretty much up to her. Well, well in your knees. I think it's yeah. I think it's Get she'll be fine. Yeah, mom's gonna outlive us all. So we just need to make you a little more bionic. Yeah. Well. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yesterday we had a great day. Dad wanted to do something touristy. It's also uh, we're under a heat advisory here, so I was like, we're not going on a bus tour. That sounds like a fucking yeah. nightmare because those things are just a minivan that they cut the roof off of. I, and not professionally. No, either. that is an at home job. <laughs> Every single one. You're like, that's good for them for having something that's strong enough to cut through a car. See, I got this old minivan and a plasma torch. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? Uh, what kind of torch? A plasma, plasma torch. Okay. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. So I was like, you know what? We haven't done. There's a new American, uh, the the new Academy Awards Museum. Yeah, I had never done the old one, nor we did had, I know there was one. I think we had done. I don't. You must not have been with us. He was. Yeah, you were. It was all four of us. We did like they did a preview of that museum like six, seven years ago. Oh, before we went to the car museum. Yes. I think it was, it was that the same time. day. May was it? Yeah. Yeah, we went to the Peterson Car Museum where Biggie got shot. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, and I guess we did that the next that same day. Um, but yeah, then it took like a, they redid this whole building and like added this huge glass dome that's like seven stories tall. It was really cool, and they've got a really cool area up like an event space that has an incredible view of the Los Angeles Basin. That's the dome, uh, and it faces north, so you see the Hollywood sign. It does look like something out of a movie kind of thing totally it's, it's like when you turn the corner it's kind of an la version of wizard of oz where it just like opens up and it's color yeah you're expecting to like be greeted by some sort of council high council speaking of wizard of oz they did have a great wizard of oz uh exhibit exhibit and uh and i can say and i can actually compare them because i was just at the smithsonian in washington dc where they also had a wizard of oz exhibit and uh Uh, we point around here for things we want. There you go. Yeah, just got some brisket. We're all drinking a little Pliny the Elder. Well, they are drinking some Pliny the Elder. I'm drinking the uh, the hazy from Russian River. I had Th that before. It's great. Thank you, Jacob Tots, for uh, taking care of us here at the pod. We uh, love Jacob Tots. We do love Jacob Tots. Hope he comes up to Portland uh, for the taping. Uh, but if he doesn't, we completely understand. Uh, we also hope his leg is all in one piece, because last time I saw him, it wasn't. Uh, can and I tell you, it, and then it you wasn't remember Jacob Tots? He partied so hard with me, he rebroke his leg. Uh-huh. God bless him, man. That's fucking, that's a friend. Thank you for being a friend. Man. Uh, but yeah, yesterday we went and saw the Academy Award Museum, which was great. Yep. And then we went, and I'll tell you what, I've lived here 17 years, and I had never been Tamuso and Franks. And uh, fucking Ho great. What? I did take mom and dad to Soho House. That's right. I knew there was something else. I took my. Uh, th th thanks. Thank you to uh, my bestie Tyler, 
T-Bone. T-Bone, who's a founding member at the newest Soho house here in uh, West Hollywood. So he invited mom and dad and I to the rooftop. Uh, I'm no longer allowed at a lot of Soho <laughs> houses. Yeah. Uh, I might have got a little excited when I saw Terrence Trent Darby there. So. Oh my God, is that the star of Silver Spoons? <laughs> Uh, Who the fuck is that? <laughs> it was. It was honestly. It was a really nice place, but one of the bougiest places I've ever been to in my entire. I life. I mean, that's. I think that's what that's Soho House means. Yeah. Uh, it's their brand, but we went and sat up on the rooftop. <clears throat> I was one of my bougie friends. Every single one of them was wearing something very designer. And expensive. And very expensive. Like fourteen hundred dollar pairs of shoes. Retail. On each one of them. Yeah, retail. That's not, I have a pair of really hard to find Jordans, $1,400. That's no, I walked out of Bloomies, 1400 boats. Literally. Terrence Trent Darby sang the uh, song Wishing Well. But did not wish you well to kiss and tell. Oh, yeah. Wish you well with crocodile things. A boop, boop, boop. <laughs> boop, 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 boop. Boop, 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 boop. A boop, boop, boop. <laughs> Boop, boop, boop. <laughs> boop, boop. <laughs> yeah, so, way too many Looney Tunes. So fun. Terrence Trent Darby was like supposed to be the next prince. Yeah. And uh, the problem was the only one who thought that was Terrence Trent Darby. And he told everybody. And he even proclaimed that his this album was going to be the next fucking Sgt. Peppers or whatever the fuck. It was produced by Bobby McFerrin. He had such a big ego that in the music industry, he was an issue. Like, do you understand? Like, in the fucking Hall of Fame of egos, he was an ego problem. Like, that's how big his ego was. Man. That's, that's an astounding feat. Wishing well, you crocodile A boop, 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 boop. Brought to you by Manscaped. Boop, 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 boop. All right. Uh, uh, yeah, so we did tell Hello House, and then we, we were just up there for a couple hours. It was so nice. Gorgeous view. Saw the dome. What from dome? From another angle, the dome we were at earlier oh, in yeah. the day. Uh, not a hollow dome. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, then we went to Musso and Frank's. And, and for my the- goodness... Have you told them what's... Yeah, because we've talked about Soho House, so people know what Soho House is. Yeah, and it is like a global thing, and it's they're in most cities now, so I do feel like people Yeah, know. I don't think there's a Soho House in Indianapolis. Probably not, but there's one in Austin, there's one in Nashville. Okay, so like all the hip towns. Yeah. I don't. There's no Soho House Sioux Falls. Well, no. Have you seen those falls? They deserve nothing. They do. They don't. It's a fucking, they do don't. They found do don't. Fuck you and your eight and a half foot falls. Name your city after something else. That's more of a Sioux tumble. Yeah, yeah. At best. Sioux Rapids. I mean, they're more slopids. All right. Don't make fun of the special needs kids. All right. Uh, so we Musso did- and Frank's. <laughs> So we didn't go to Musso and Frank's. Uh, maybe the most historic restaurant still in Los Angeles since the Brown Derby closed years ago. Mm-hmm. It's the oldest restaurant in Hollywood. It w- opened in 1919. It was open when it was open. The Hollywood Boulevard was a dirt road. Yeah, and Charlie Chaplin and his associates. Who was it? Who was it? Douglas Fairbanks. Douglas Fairbanks and Mary Pickford. Mary Pickford. Is that a guy or a girl? It's a girl. This girl is married to Douglas Fair. Oh. To Douglas they would race horses to Musso and Frank's down Hollywood Boulevard, and whoever got there last had to pay for lunch, which we saw the original menu last night, and it would have cost about five bucks. Yeah. Uh, bottles of wine were $2. Uh, steaks were 60 cents. Wow. And we did the currency converter. 60 cents in 1919 money would be 10 bucks. And so even now, still very it's a deal, very well, yeah. Price not a bad, not a bad gig. Uh, it is much more expensive than that now. Uh, however, not over. <laughs> however, I love how you do laundry every podcast. Uh, 
Well, I got to get shit done, Rue. Okay. I'm, I'm no, a, that's fine. I'm a busy man. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Notice how I'm not around a lot? Uh, so, yeah. I, uh, so, yeah, we went to Musso and Frank's. It was a wonderful dinner. Uh, it was. The service was impeccable. One of my new favorite spots. Yeah. Uh, it's so great. The food was so good. Pork, I had the pork chop. Great. I had the lobster tail. I had the risotto. The mm. lobster tail was amazing. It was so good, and I have so many sides in my fridge. I'm so mad. I should have surfed and turfed, I, but I, I, it wasn't even an option. I would have had to just pay for both. Yeah. Which is... That's what you have to do with the palm, though. I guess I give you the option for half a lobster. They don't do that anymore. You got to go full three pound now. Yeah. Which, like, fuck off. They also hawk Bitcoin at the table now, too, so... Sidestep so that landmine. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, we had a great time. It was. We're really, we're really sad to see mom and dad leave tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, however, I get to fly home and hang out with them for another 10 days. <laughs> so. Oh, dad was just like, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Have you had enough of me yet? Too bad. We're <laughs> doubling up. <laughs> and I'm going to have to learn how to, and I, and I mean this, I'm not trying to be a bougie fuckhole. But I'm going to have to relearn how to drive a regular car now. Uh, now. Because uh, as we've talked about, the Tesla is the one pedal driving thing. And I haven't driven a regular car in a month and a half. And uh, it's going to be weird. I'm sure you'll be fine. Yeah. I'm sure I will be fine, too. It'll be like riding a bike. I'm going to scare like the shit car. out of myself a couple of times. I know that. Well. Uh, but I'm just going to try not to drive as much as possible. There you go. Yeah, it's a bummer. I'm not going to be able to make it back, but you guys But also, have fun it's a positive. One. It is a positive. Because you're working. And I get to go on a boat. You're going on a boat, bitch. And I get to uh, do Fourth of July at Tyler's building again, which is going to be great. Last year, they got a margarita machine. That's... This year, they're going to get a margarita machine. I'm excited. How are the margaritas out of the margarita machine? Great. Tina puts a double the amount of tequila you're supposed to put in there. Oh, and... shit. So they are tick. It's like that episode of The Simpsons where they ask for this squishy all syrup. <laughs> they start hallucinating. And they start hallucinating. <laughs> and they have to like suck on the straw so hard that Milhouse just sucks it into the back of his throat. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I'm excited. It'll be fun, but bummed to not be at home. I'm going to go to two Royals games. I'm really excited about that. Taking the fam. You probably won't be afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> it's... uh. Cool thing about a shitty team, tickets are cheap. <laughs> tickets are real cheap. You can sit real up close for not a lot of money. Yeah. And uh, if you pay enough money, you can play the the last half of the ninth. You know what I was reading the other day because I was Googling the Macaluso mob family in Kansas City. And why were you Googling them? Uh, well, we'll get into that in just Looking a second. Looking for potential suitors. <laughs> I like a guy with cash. Um... No, I was researching the Macaluso mob family in Kansas City, and the only article you could really find about anyone is that, in, I think it was in like the late 2000s, the Royals got a right fielder who was 54 years old uh, <laughs> under a very regular name, but it was a Macaluso mob member that they were just covering or like stashing and hiding. As a royal? As a royal. <laughs> We need to hide Gary. Uh, what if we put him in right field? Of what? The Royals. <laughs> uh, okay. He's got to cool down. <laughs> I mean, it was the late 2000s. It was. Why are all those red dots on that right fielder's head? <laughs> Shot out to right. He goes back. He goes back. His head explodes. Uh, it looks like it's a home run. <laughs> Why is that right fielder eating a submarine sandwich? And the reason why Andy was uh, looking up the Macaluso family is because. Uh... Okay, so so Chris and I always argue about the name Archie. It was just happening a couple episodes ago. One of us want to name our kid Archie. It's a. It's We're a... basically having a race to have a kid. Yeah, it is the slowest race on planet Earth, <laughs> but we're both still in it. Do you remember that episode of or that? strip of calvin and Hobbes, where they're like literally trying to have the slowest race ever that's what we're doing yeah and andy's looking at me going hey you can't go backwards <laughs> uh 
yeah, so we have a great grandfather named Archie, and he, as we've talked about on the podcast, he shot himself in, in the head and had, it, but survived. And we thought it was because he was cleaning his gun, and he had like a divot in his skull. Anyway, we found out that's not the truth. That is not the truth. The truth is much cooler, Dad, and also much more awful. I can't talk about it. Uh, no, oh so he worked at a, he worked at a gr- No, it's it's your mom's grandfather, and he was a bookie. Yeah, he was the German bookie. He was the German bookie, and at Kelly's Bar, there was the Irish bookie and the German bookie. They both worked for the mob, and Archie was also a butcher. And he worked at this grocery store down on the boulevard. That called, was also owned by the mob. Uh, called Macaluso's. And a guy came in to rob the grocery store. And the wife goes, fuck you. You're not taking my money. And he turned around and he shot your great-grandfather in the head. And then they were like, And he right. still didn't get the money. And then a couple of days later, they found the robber. Yeah. And our great grandpa lived to tell the story. And his name was Jimmy Hoffa. Uh, he was <laughs> he was in a hospital, in and out of a hospital for like six or seven years, and uh, he had a divot in his head. He looked like the Death Star. Yeah, you could lay your finger in the middle of that. Yeah, groove. Uh, as a matter of fact, you had to do that. It was a punishment if you were a bad kid. Well, that's how you get him to talk. <laughs> Shut <laughs> up. <laughs> Uh, um, no, but he, but the Macalusos paid him and great grandma off for years after that, right? The rest of his life. Fuck. <laughs> and so he was known for having that great grandpa, Archie was known for keeping the cash as silver dollars. Well, th- when they paid off the debts at Kelly's back then, this was in the twenties and the early thirties, they would pay in silver dollar because it was very, very common coin. And Legend has it that he had a chest full of silver dollars at his house, and every Christmas, all the grandkids would get silver dollars. Yeah, my mom was like, I remember getting silver dollars every Christmas. She would say that if she were out here. And it, basically what it was was the skim that that Archie was taking off. Hey. This yeah. is why Can't Tupac, trace silver dollars. This is why Tupac lyrics always resonate with me, because I'm fucking... Descendant of a straight up gangster, right? Yeah, I mean, I suppose. we've been spending most our lives living in a gangster paradise. Yeah, That's Archie, Coolio, but Archie still. was always a dapper dresser. The pictures from the '30s, he always had the fedora and the. That's where brush. I get it. Spats. That's where I get it. I'm sure, he had spats, and your grandmother, your great grandmother, was a Harvey girl. Yes, you know this is probably why I'm so rough and tumble. You think? Yeah. Uh, and uh, what was a Harvey girl, Dad? Explain it to the uh, audience. Fred Harvey's restaurants were at every train station in the country. Yeah, it's like the Girl Scout version of a Playboy bunny. Yeah, I mean, you had to be beautiful and you had to, you know, have the proper demeanor to become a Harvey girl. And I mean, Judy Garland made a movie out of it. That's what I said to you the other night. <laughs> He was like, do you know what a Harvey girl is? I was like, yeah. Judy Garland made a movie out of it. <laughs> but yeah, so she was a Harvey girl and Archie was a, a gangsta. Yeah. That's so awesome. <laughs> well. I should be a bookie. Nah. I'm not great with numbers. <laughs> I'd be a terrible bookie. Why does everybody win? Everybody's winning all the time. <laughs> Are you want the over or the under? I don't. What is that? Could you explain to me what that means? So you want to bet on the Globe Trotters winning? All right, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> the odds are not in your favor. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you twenty to one. Well, we'll just hook you up with Billy Brennan. He can give you some pointers. Well, <laughs> gonna have to boop that out. What, Billy? We wouldn't yeah. have to boop that out. He already did his time. Oh yeah, like he stopped. I can't confirm or deny. Okay. But I know that he brings the Gabagool to every Christmas. <laughs> I can't, I can't reach the button. But uh, <laughs> sad tr- hit A. There you go. Thank you. Hey, if you have any questions, concerns, if you have any uh, need for life advice, send it to one millionth pod. That's all words. One million with a th and a pod at gmail dot com. And if we have time, we'll read them here on the pod.
What'd you do? <laughs> I was crossing my right leg into my lap, and I uh-huh. hit my right heel into my left shin. You're on fire today. Yeah, you I are. am? <laughs> I'm tired. Uh, so, I think someone got away with a DUI a couple of years ago. Why? A Scuba unit in Delaware recovered a vehicle from the bottom of a creek on Monday. Uh, 1994 Hyundai Elantra was buried about 16 feet deep. Police said the vehicle had not been reported missing or stolen. It was buried six feet teen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. I yeah, like, it was. I saw the <laughs> electrics shorting out in my eyes. <laughs> Do we need to take you to urgent care? Jesus Christ. Narp. Narp. I'm good. <laughs> Oh Lord! The, so this car was buried sixteen feet deep. <laughs> yeah, in the in the lake. Uh, police said it had not been recorded. Showed the car smashed and eroded. It either that's either a DUI. That's either a guy got drunk, drove his car, got out, and was like, "Well, fuck that car." We've seen that happen. Or someone was like, "Let's do some jackass shit," and they did, and then someone forgot to hit p- record. You know, as someone who lives in, on one of the busiest streets in Hollywood, I've seen so many cars crashed and abandoned after DUI situations. Do you remember the time we were walking by? That's what I was referencing earlier when I was like, we've seen that happen. <laughs> one time, I think we sent you pictures, but one time we were just walking down Franklin. We came home, it was two in the morning, we came home drunk, and we were like, let's walk down to Subway. That's right, and there is a Honda... But behind it is a wheel and full uh, shock assembly on the ground. That's the first thing we saw. We were like, what is this tire with all this stuff on it? And then we, and keep- then we walked 20 feet further, and then we saw the car with no front tire. With no front tire or shock assembly, and it was also a Honda. We're not detectives, but we're like, I bet it's from that. And in the... <laughs> In the driver's seat is this Asian dude passed out with the owner's manual in his lap. <laughs> like, how do I reattach this assembly? Yeah. So Chris and I were like, we are too drunk to deal with this. Yeah, so we so just So let's lapped. get our sandwiches, and if we come back and he's still here, we'll do something about it. And we walk back up, and there's these three dudes... You know, wake the guy. They have obviously woken the guy up. He's a little disoriented because he's hammered. Yeah. And these guys are really kind of taking the piss out of him and being pretty rude about it. I mean, but also the guy has nice put guy. several people in danger. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He also like smashed into four cars behind him before he lost a tire. Oh yeah. So he gets they uh, they've got him woken up. He's out of the car at this point, and so. Doesn't say anything to his bullies, but just crosses the street and starts walking the other direction. But he gets halfway through the crosswalk and turns around and with his key fob, locks his car. It was classic. It was fun. Like, Andy and I are like, no way that just happened. We were like, yeah, make sure no one takes this puppy for any joy rides. (laughs) (laughs) I'm three-wheel mode. (laughs) Oh, man. Okay. A quick little story, because I don't know what part of Kansas this happened in, but it did happen in Kansas. Um, a couple went on a vacation to Las Vegas, and so they put their dog in a dog hotel. When they, uh, they were pretty surprised when they got a notification from their Ring doorbell camera to see that their dog had escaped the dog hotel and ran all the way back to their house. I told you you left my toy. <laughs> Look at this. Fucking t- dog! They've got someone to go over and like take make sure the dog was okay and yeah take care of it. But this dog is like at the door, just like, hey, you guys <laughs> forgot me at the place. You guys, <laughs> hey, you guys, I checked out. I didn't like that place. <laughs> oh man, I took a black light in there and it was gross. <laughs> hey, you guys, you look guys. at this. How far away from the place was the place? 
It, do, it doesn't say. There's not a ton of details. Uh, but this poor sweet Dexter. He's got a nose on him. Look at this. <laughs> you guys. You guys. Come on, guys. I know you're in there. I hate other dogs. I don't. I don't. I don't like it there. They're also really dumb. It was a garden view room. I hate those. <laughs> it was right next to the pool. The kids were screaming all day. I fucking smelled hated like it. bleach. They caught me smoking weed in the bathroom. They kicked me out. I gotta go. I was boofing milk bones. <laughs> oh well, that was fun. <laughs> Fun. Thanks for being a part of it, Dad. Yeah. Thanks for having me. We're glad you're. We're glad you're. You're out here and that you're doing stuff. Uh, it'll be. Hope to see you in another four years when you decide to come back out. It'll be six. Uh, well, as always, uh, I'm Chris Porter. You can find me at one million or fucking. I'm gonna try that. I'm gonna try that all over. Three, two, one. Uh, as always, that's the one millionth pod. I'm Chris Porter. You can find me at at Chris at fucking. <laughs> Are you six deep feet? Six fifteen. Six deep feet. Uh, and as always, I'm Chris Porter. I'm off for the next month, so I don't have any dates. But you can see my upcoming ones when I post them soon at chrisportercomedy.com, and you can find uh, all my trials and tribulations on Twitter and Instagram at I am Chris Porter. Uh, yeah, you can find me on the steps of the Capitol. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, I mean, I wish. Uh, I'm poor. Um, you can find me on Instagram at Andy Port and on Twitter at Andy Porter. You can find the pod on Twitter at the number one and the words millionth pod and on Instagram at one millionth pod. That's all words. One million with a TH and a POD. I'm Chris Porter. I'm Andy Porter. I'm Scott Porter. And this has been the one millionth podcast. Fuck you. Come on by. Do 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 Oh, God, I'm so glad that's over. <laughs> I tell you, I got up this morning and tripped over a stuffed dick and balls in Chris's room. <laughs> I would say that's Otto's, but we know the truth. <laughs>